Hey, welcome back to the channel. And this Oklahoma weather is crazy. <clears throat> we had about 90 degrees yesterday. Had a front come through. Lots of water, lightning, uh, not much other stuff. Um, but it is probably in the 50s today. And I'm gonna have to probably get me a hoodie on because I'm not accustomed to, to this uh, temperature. But we're gonna go out and check the animals, make sure everything looks good from uh, storms last night. Um, looking at the garden, these old sunflowers are coming up pretty good. Need to do a little weeding out, but probably not gonna get out and garden a whole lot because it's pretty muddy. Um, everything's looking fairly decent. Animals see me, so they're going to come running up. They're acting like they're starving. <laughs> it's kind of neat to watch these things come running in. <laughs> I've really enjoyed these goats. They've uh, been a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, Ollivander. How are you, bub? How's the goats? <laughs> well, you all coughed up, huh? <laughs> and the new little babies are doing good. <laughs> well, get it out of there. All right. Let's go check the chickens out. I haven't got a video of my new little chicken coop. Um. I, uh, we had this, um, playhouse there in the yard and I brought it out here thinking the goats would kind of play around in it and whatever else like that. Cause the goats kind of enjoy that kind of stuff. They, they would get around in it a little bit. I uh, hatched out some chickens. I was like, man, I've got to have a place to put these chickens. I didn't have anything set up yet. So <laughs> I, uh, kind of made me a little makeshift chicken coop ollie does a very good job yes you do ollie i'm talking about you buddy <clears throat> hey get down get down he uh he does a very good job of keeping anything that's not supposed to be in the pen out so different types of animals you know skunks uh coons possums he uh snakes <laughs> he does a very good job of keeping those out and so I thought, you know, if I put this chicken coop in the very middle of the, of the goat pen, then he uh, should keep those varmints out because I don't have a very tight, I mean, it's pretty tight, you know, on the wires here. But, uh, old coons can climb over stuff. So I thought, you know, I could put the, the chicken coop in the middle and he could kind of deter the coons. And it uh, seemed like he's been doing a good job because... I haven't found any feathers out here yet. But uh, if that's normal, I don't know if that's normal for, for people to have their chicken pens kind of in the middle like this where your dog can keep the varmints out. Um, if you guys have, have any experience with that and this worked out good, just let me know. If not, if I need to do something different, let me know also. I do not have a cover over the top here it's uh open so owls and chicken hawks and stuff like that that's kind of weird the coyotes are getting after it in the middle of the day i don't know if you can hear it or not but they're way down there probably about three quarters of a mile down but they're feeling good i don't know if they're liking this cooler weather or what but they are getting after it but, okay, back to this, sorry. Um, so I don't have the netting over the top yet. Um, just kind of buying my time, I guess, I don't know. Um, but these chickens, they come in here. I need to build me like a little roosting rod or something like that and go across there. But they, uh, Seem to be liking it. 
I need to feed them. There's still a little bit of feed in there. So I started off with nine, and there is still nine there. So they've been in here for a good full week. So, knock on wood, we're still doing good. But I do need to put me a roosting thing through here for them. Y'all have any ideas? Or if I just need to back up and punt and do something totally different, let me know. Ollie, <laughs> you're ready to be fed, aren't you? So I got this idea of a gate from uh, Adler Farms. I've seen he use some of these pallets for gates. So uh, I like, I kind of like the idea. It's working so far. That's what I kind of like about the, uh, oh, I guess you call it the YouTube family. Um, You can kind of watch their stuff and get ideas, see what works and what doesn't work. Um, where I live at right now, kind of right there in the, I guess the Mecca of homesteaders. Um, so I say, I, I don't know a whole lot of them other than I know uh, Dutch and uh, Bo Moorhead from Moorhead Homesteads. And I know uh, the Walker's really good but there's Adler Farms, they're pretty close, and uh, Hidden Heights. So that's just kind of a few. <clears throat> they did the uh, Oki Homestead this past spring and I got to go up there and kind of participate in a little bit of that stuff and, and see what they had going on. It was pretty neat. Um, it's been, been a pretty fun adventure doing all this stuff. Water's looking good. You can kind of see it was just a little bitty pool of water yesterday and it's filled back up just live down here in the valley and uh if it rains it's just gonna flood up so all right i'm gonna get these animals fed i uh make a lot of references to the movie uh, Jurassic Park, I love the, I love the, their movies, and I always kind of feel like I've got my own little Jurassic Park here. These goats are like a bunch of nagum raptors. <laughs> if you ever watched them, um, whenever you got a feed bucket, they get pretty serious. All right, Ollie, let's get you fed. <laughs> and Ollie, he's pretty protective of his feed. Okay, buddy. You ready? Here we go. There you go. There you go, Zoss. There you go. Uh-oh. Here we go. No, no. Ollie, you be nice. This one. Got his head stuck. Why? All right. Ollie, you be nice. Head coming. Sorry guys, that was a wild ride. Hopefully I didn't break anything. That's how they struggle with these little tripods. Alright, let's get your head out of there. Why are you this? <laughs> oh man the uh whenever i bought these goats jessica and jeremy they asked me do you want them pulled or you want the horns on them and i said i, I don't know jessica vic i've known her all my life um her mom used to babysit me whenever i was a little kid um 
she says she really likes them without the horns because they don't get hung up and i've just got one without the horns right there i call her pole um but jeremy he likes to have the horns because it makes them where you can grab a hold of them and work them so i don't know uh i kind of like the horns but the uh getting them hung up in the fence is kind of aggravating too all right I, I know it you guys have been waiting for this so gotta be quick efficient <laughs> you margaret you get back quick quick i i can't do this uh, oh no tyke that gum at you you're not gonna get fed now you know better than that all right here we go y'all go y'all know where to go let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go come on oh ow come on Susie get out of there I, I'm not feeding you if you're standing in your plate I ain't gonna feed you standing in your dinner plate this <laughs> Ollie knows that Tyke should not be out there. All right, Tyke, I'll come get you. Once y'all get out of your dinner plate. <laughs> Susie, come here. Y'all get out of there. I ain't feeding you, you standing in there. Watch out. Here. All right, come on, Tyke. Get over here, buddy. Come on, let's go. Get back in here, get over and eat. You better get over there, they're eating without you. <clears throat> so that one named Tyke, um, if you go look at some of our earlier videos, he was uh, one of the first baby goats we had. And I uh, went out there right after he was born and he was by himself away from everybody else and i looked at his back leg and his back leg just sitting there dangling man you know this is our first baby goats this is the first time with goats and i'm having to deal with this wasn't real excited i was like man this is going to be rough um if this is a common thing for goats so i called jeremy up and i asked him i said jeremy what do i need to do what do you think he jeremy says normally you probably just need to send it on the greener pastures but i think you probably could split it and uh maybe it would take so i uh did a little research on youtube saw uh how to split went and got me some uh, vet tape and some popsicle sticks made me a little splint and he ran around with that kind of off three legs for quite a while and then started using it more and using it more and uh after about five to six weeks took the splint off and you cannot even tell uh anything different between the two legs so kind of cool stuff you learn um but i mean i've been out here on the farm you know all my life and with different animals and sometimes you just gotta send them on the greener pastures but uh it's kind of cool whenever you can uh do some things and help them improve the quality of life and and just make it happen so that was a lot of fun i enjoyed that so needless to say you might check those videos out and you kind of see our journey with that and uh it was fun because i included olivia she was right there with me putting the splint on a little tyke and uh so she she got experienced that also and yeah all this stuff is fun i'm learning right there along with it but what i think is even more important is that uh my kids are learning also and uh learning important things here on the farm because you've got to pass this stuff on to to the future generations 
and keep this stuff going because um, there's a lot of people, I mean, a lot of different things that people are losing, different uh, skills and traits and stuff. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's important. All right, so you can see I've got a lot of water in the yard. Um, I need to do some trimming and stuff. I mowed last night, luckily, uh, because I would not be able to mow today. But I'm gonna go out and do some weed eating. So you can kind of do that whenever it's wet. And then I have an, another project. I'm gonna show you guys. My flower beds are kind of a wreck right now. I need to do some work on them. I've got, I think they call this a box, boxwood, or I can't remember what they call it. But I need to give it a haircut, shape it up. <clears throat> I need to do the same over there. Kind of looking disheveled. <clears throat> Crepe myrtles are coming up. They're looking good. We had a bad freeze last year, or the year before last, and it killed out a lot of crepe myrtles. I mean, like, killed them bad. And now they're just starting to kind of regenerate back and come up with new shoots. So, got to kind of redo those and get them right. So, that's what we got planned for today.